In today's draft review, we'll be taking a look at the Korean Civil War of the World's Quarterfinals in Damwon Kia vs Gen G. Seeing a bit about what we saw from the other banger series in the quarterfinals, we were ready to expect some adaptations from these teams. However, I don't think anyone was prepared for the level of craziness that these guys were actually swinging for. And needless to say, I love the creativity that's coming out from these guys, and it's my honor to break down the logic behind some of these picks that these teams are going for. As always, if you enjoy content like this, feel free to drop a sub to support the channel. Let's hop in the draft. To start things off in this game, we've got Genji on blue side, and the banister to reflect some of the dynamics and adjustments we've been seeing in the meta right now. Graves and Silas priority have been jumping up significantly, and we're seeing different teams believe in more and more on their own picks that they think will take over the meta. In this case, Genji rid themselves of Sichuani and Caitlyn in addition to the Graves, while Damwon removed Aatrox and Azir. This means that Genji have a few options to determine the kind of game pace they see themselves winning through, and in this case, they opt for the Yumi. It's not very often where it's available to be taken, and although they are signing up for damage control on the bottom side, the champion tends to be too strong right now in order to give up still. DK respond kindly by swinging for the Lucian Nami combo in the landing phase. The pick is pretty natural to go for at this point in the first phase, but something to note is the way in which they picked it. DK actually picked both the Lucian and the Nami here in the R1 R2, and the main alternative is to pick one of the two champions and then take another priority pick on top of that. This is because the enemy team will most likely not take away the other champion from you, plus you get to use a second slot in order to secure another strong pick for yourself. The main benefit of them holding it off at this point is that they reveal less information by putting it this way. Genji kinda just agreed to the pick though and take two picks that they see working well here, in both the Maokai and surprisingly, Misfortune. Ever since her lack of success in the group stage though, MF has fallen pretty hard off the cliff, and many teams have considered it dropped off the meta entirely. However, her statistics have not indicated that she was that weak in the first place, and Genji seemed to agree here. It matches well into the Lucian and provides a very solid combo for Genji's composition so far, especially when compared to Yumi's normal companion in the Sivir, which should actually struggle much more in lane against this combination. I think this is a great use of the pick overall. DK round out this first phase with the Lissandra pick, which I think is okay, but by seeing the Misfortune pick, I want to see more picks either dedicated to something uncontested, or for getting a pick that can counter MF in one way or another. If you recall in earlier parts of Worlds, this is literally why she fell out of meta in the first place. I think the Lissandra pick can help with this since there's so much lockdown that can prevent Yumi from getting out in fights, but other picks like Orner Vi could also do the job here, without necessarily worrying about a Lissandra ban. There are other picks in the mid slot that can work with these options in R4 and R5, but the Lissandra here is not the end of the world. Moving into phase 2, Genji has some flexibility here with the Maokai, but their comp is pretty much looking for a decent source of power in topside and then establishing a strong front to back by the mid game. DK on the other hand have pretty much already revealed that their composition wants to dissect Genji's optimal positioning here. With this in mind, Genji banned on Camille and Viego, while DK banned on the Vi and the Victor. Out of the bands and moving into R4, DK preemptively swing for the Gragas on top side, which is actually super smart. I think Orn would have also fit the bill here, but I assume that DK wanted a top lane that had as stable of a matchup curve as possible. This could be because Genji must play through top side, so they're actually trying to stabilize against this potential pick as much as possible here, which is the Renekton, and then after that we actually see the Rise pick come out for Chovy. This is super old school here, as Rise very specifically has favorable interactions with Lissandra, as they are both mages with very similar range, but Rise is a really good matchup, and Rise can choose to to lock down Lissandra at any time with his root and prevent the Lissandra escape. On another insanely spicy note though, one thing that you might have noticed is that DK actually saved the jungle pick for R5 here, and boy do we have a hidden tech come out for Canyon in the cane. DK have definitely gotten something prepared very specifically for this current tank meta in the jungle, and although Kane is a champion that you don't see in the meta often for his slow and low impact clear style, guaranteeing a matchup into a tank like Maokai or Sejuani means that he'll be able to serve a very stable early game and then potentially outscale these giga tanks as well. That's sort of the theory behind this, and DK once again drafted heavy CC in other areas of the map to help sort of compensate and create more leverage for the Kane as well. This leads into the overall dynamic of draft, and this is quite the display from both teams as to what can really go on at the highest level of it. Both teams prepared some crazy picks, and a lot of champions have absolutely been revived from the dead here for the sake of this series. Gen G's comp is relatively standard and wants to basically enable their top and mid, while the MF Yumi combo can actually hold their own against Lucian Nami, while DK's comp focuses on playing forwards and taking space, with the added benefit of that they don't actually have to worry about playing over aggressive like other compositions thanks to the Kane pick. Teams forcing themselves to have to play for early impact and such actually often results in them just getting ready to fumble, so this actually addresses this problem very well. Giving up trades in the right areas, and come up with creative solutions to take advantages back in other ways of draft. This is what I like to see from drafts, and I just love seeing teams take advantage of as much of the league roster as possible. Overall, both teams have great and unique comps overall, and I'd say that Genji still have a lot of great picks, have a stable and consistent way to scale into the later phases of the game, but also have an easier time executing on its composition. Because of this, I rate the draft just slightly towards them at 55-45.
As always, though, I hope this analysis was insightful to you guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay fresh. Say no.